One of the underreported pieces of news to celebrate lately is the series of defeats for ISIS. Earlier this summer, Russia and Syrian state TV claimed that ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi had been killed in a late May airstrike outside of Raqqa, Syria, the capital of ISIS's self-described Islamic Caliphate. This news supposedly according to a frontline ISIS commander. U.S. officials were unable to confirm the story at the time, and skepticism remains. Defense Secretary Mattis says until he sees the body, he will assume Baghdadi is alive. A wise approach, considering this man reportedly dies on a semi-annual basis. He's a Revenant-level survivor and bin Laden's successor as hide-and-seek champion, so get back to us when you have some proof. But along with Baghdadi's alleged death, at least until his next resurrection, there is significant observable progress in the war against ISIS. After nine months of counteroffensive from the Iraqi military, Mosul, the ISIS stronghold in northern Iraq, is now liberated, a city ISIS had held since conquering it swiftly in 2014. In late June, ISIS waved a symbolic white flag, intentionally detonating Mosul's Great Mosque of Al Nuri as they lost the fight for the city, the same mosque at which Baghdadi declared himself the head of the newly established Islamic Caliphate in June 2014. What was a long and bloody urban fight is now transforming into a humanitarian effort to liberate Iraqi families held hostage to obey ISIS demands during occupation. Door by door, Iraqi military forces have been freeing and escorting families in hiding to food and shelter elsewhere, under sporadic attack from remaining ISIS fighters. It's the unprotected spaces between the buildings that are most dangerous, where ISIS snipers perch overhead picking off their victims. Within minutes of us filming these two soldiers in the alley, a suicide bomber leapt off a building attacking them. Both were wounded. Iraqi forces admit they are not out for prisoners. They are out for blood. For the men of the counterterrorism force, this is a kill mission. A hunt for the final ISIS fighters. They rarely take prisoners. There are two bodies lying in the streets here, clearly belonging to ISIS fighters. It's a brutal fight that's even personal in many cases. One Iraqi lieutenant describes how he personally hunts for two ISIS militants who he says killed his father. In the process, he openly admits to executing ISIS fighters after interrogating them and pledges a slow death to the two men for whom he searches, as well as a public hanging. Recent video shows Iraqi soldiers giving ISIS fighters a very ISIS death, tossing them off a cliff and shooting their bodies on the ground below. Which gives me conflicting thoughts. On one hand, you set this precedent, ISIS, and war is hell. On the other hand, due process of law and a stance against extrajudicial killings are core values we should uphold, even for the least deserving. But rightly or wrongly, what we have in Mosul now is an effort to get innocent civilians out to food and shelter elsewhere, while eradicating those who have held them captive for years. It's a losing proposition for ISIS. You can stay and fight to your likely gruesome death, or you can try to escape and fight another day. And since the apparent safe way out of the city is to be a woman or a child, these circumstances have reportedly left ISIS fighters opting for an unlikely escape plan, the images of which you won't soon forget. Photos released by the Iraqi military and published by Kurdistan24, a Kurdish TV network, show what is described as ISIS militants disguised as women attempting to flee the city. Their outfits include not just the external burqa, but padded bras and low-cut tops as well. And in at least one case, even a full makeup job, complete with powder, lipstick, and eyeshadow, as well as a few beauty spots for that extra detail. Several reports laugh at this man for, quote, forgetting to shave his beard. But I don't buy that this guy or whoever did his makeup went to that level of detail and simply forgot about the beard. It looks like he trimmed it quite nicely, and if he in fact did it, ISIS rules are ISIS rules. ISIS had previously issued leaflets in Mosul banning the shaving of beards under penalty of detainment. And of course, women must wear modest clothing as well. But I don't see anything in there that bans a good man of the prophet from doing a little cross-dressing when the circumstances demand. Just trim that beard a bit tighter so you don't get that burqa bush poking out, you know? Still, it's that extra mile of beauty effort that has me suspicious of this story. I can believe that ISIS fighters would dress as women to try to escape the city, throwing on a quick burqa to make a street dash to get to where they need to go. But doesn't this extra level of detail seem a bit 
unnecessary? If you're caught and they get the burqa off of you, are the padded bra and the cherry red lipstick going to have any effect in convincing anyone that you're a woman? Plus, we already know the Iraqi military is treating these men brutally. Is it possible they're taking some additional artistic liberties in giving ISIS fighters some online embarrassment too. Compared to the cliff tossing we saw earlier, a glamorous makeover on public display would be humane treatment. But whether it's authentic or staged, this isn't the first time we've seen this story either. Photos from 2015 battles in northern Iraq show similarly dressed captives. The bras, the lipstick, the whole high effort costume. If this is a setup, it's an ongoing and repeated setup. Still, the Kurdish source of these new photos is also sharing those old photos, saying they are from, quote, other parts of Iraq, without noting that the photos are in fact several years old. Makes me a little suspicious they aren't being entirely truthful about what these photos actually are. And so I'm left not knowing what to think. We have ISIS fighters who go to great lengths to fight and to survive. But we also have Iraqi soldiers who go to great lengths to punish and embarrass them. Which are we seeing here? A comical low for ISIS amid a crushing defeat? Or a propaganda effort from the Iraqi military? At this point, I've done as much research into ISIS cross-dressing as I'm willing to allow myself, but I haven't found information that is satisfying or conclusive. Which is why I want to know what you think. Are genuine glamour jihadis fleeing Mosul? Or are Iraqi forces taking liberties and dolling them up to make them look as ridiculous as possible? Or maybe some combination of both. Maybe ISIS fighters are in fact burqa'd up and Iraqi forces are just helping them finish the look before the photo op. I've put a poll atop the description for you to offer your opinion. I can't figure out how to interpret this story, so I'm very interested to see where most of you land. What we do know is whether ISIS goes lipstick or butch, they are losing ground and losing men at a rapid pace, and that is a refreshing reversal of fortune. These days, I'll take all the good news I can get, even if it comes with an image that is somehow more gender ambiguous than 5 o'clock shadow Michael Jackson. If looking at that picture is the price I have to pay for a less isis -y world, I will take that deal each and every time. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to come hang out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay.